As we learned in the previous lesson, the number of syllables in a word is equal to the number of vowel sounds. While this is a good start, there is more to a syllable than just vowels. Consonants go hand in hand with any discussion on this topic. Latin has many of the same consonant sounds as English, and as we discussed in the first video, I and U can also be consonantal. As with the vowels, there are exceptions to consonants that are important to know. The consonants X and Z, for example, are actually double consonants. That is, they represent two consonant sounds in one letter. X represents CS or GS, for example, in dux, dukis, and rex, regis. Z is pronounced like DZ in English, for example, tseugma. The consonant H is also a bit odd because in Latin it represents a light breathing, technically called a voiceless glottal fricative. Howd, for example, is not pronounced howd, but rather howd. Even in classical times, it was not always pronounced. In fact, in the first century BC, Catullus wrote a satirical poem about this very phenomenon. In Latin, H is so weak that it basically does not count for anything in terms of meter, which will be relevant to us soon. Now, let us consider how the consonants relate to syllable divisions. There are three main possibilities for how a syllable can connect to the next. First, two consecutive vowel sounds can be next to each other. Those include vowels and diphthongs. In this case, the syllable break simply occurs between the vowels. For example, in the verb eo, my syllabification is eo. The island of Ayaya, upon which Homeric Circe lived, would be split up into syllables as follows. I, I, a. Note the diphthongs. Second, there can be two vowels and or diphthongs separated by a single consonant. In this case, the consonant is taken with the latter vowel or diphthong. This is actually the natural pronunciation. For example, we would say kaisar rather than kais ar, and widat rather than widat. So, the split occurs right after the first vowel or diphthong, and the consonant joins the next syllable. Third, two vowels and or diphthongs separated by two or more consonants. This case is a bit trickier. In general, the consonants get split up between the syllables, usually with only the last joining the second syllable. Thus, almus, not almus or almus. This even applies to words with repeated consonants, which were pronounced separately. Puella, not puella or puella. There is one type of consonant cluster that does not follow this rule and instead generally stays intact. This type of cluster is made up of the consonants T, D, P, B, K, or G, together called stops because the airflow must be stopped in order to produce the letter, followed by an L or R called liquids. This means that the standard division of patres is patres, not patres. So too is recludo, normally pronounced recludo, rather than recludo. Note that the cluster joins the next syllable as if it were one consonantal sound. In poetry, however, you find both divisions, generally so that the poet can maintain the integrity of the meter. So, just to recap, here are the four main points about syllable divisions. First, when there are two consecutive vowel sounds, break the syllable between the vowels. Two, when there are two vowels and or diphthongs separated by a single consonant, break the syllable right after the first vowel or diphthong. The consonant joins the second syllable. Three, when two vowels and or diphthongs are separated by two or more consonants, split the consonants between the two syllables. And four, an exception to the previous rule, 
when T, D, P, B, K, or G is followed by an L or R, keep the consonants together and break the syllable before this cluster. Now that we know about Latin vowels and consonants, it is time to move on to how that knowledge can help us determine the lengths of Latin syllables.